This is part two of a nine-part video series showing how to rebuild a Toyota solid front axle. It can apply to 1979 through 1985 Toyota pickups and 1984 and 85 Toyota 4Runners. Additionally, these instructions could loosely apply to many Toyota Land Cruisers. In today's presentation, we will be showing the axle housing modifications. The tools needed for this job are a sawzall with a metal cutting blade, a die grinder with a 2 inch flap disc, and an angle grinder with a 4 inch 80 grit flap disc. Then later in the job you'll need to replace the flap disc with a wire wheel. You'll also need a MIG welder with the associated safety equipment. Then finally you'll need a permanent marker, a wire brush, and some fast drying enamel paint. Place the axle housing at a good working height, such as jack stands or a workbench. Using a sawzall, remove the anti-wrap bracket. Be careful here not to cut into the axle housing itself. Whatever metal is left here by the sawzall will be removed later by the angle grinder. Remove the driver side stabilizer bracket. Remove the steering stabilizer bracket. Remove the passenger side stabilizer bracket. Using the angle grinder with a flap disc, remove any metal left by the sawzall. Be very careful here not to remove any of the axle housing metal, reducing the integrity and strength of the housing. Do the same thing to the steering stabilizer bracket. And again to the passenger side stabilizer bracket. Replace the flap disc with a wire wheel. Using the wire wheel, remove any dust, dirt, or paint. To reduce the risk of rust and improve appearance, apply several coats of a fast drying paint. We prefer black, but color is your choice. We move now to the truss and differential guard. Before installing the truss and diff guard, it's a good idea to paint the underside. This will reduce the risk of rust and corrosion. Once all the paint has dried, place the truss on the axle housing and trace around it with a permanent marker. Remove the truss. Using the angle grinder and a flap disc, Grind away the paint where the wells are to be made. This will ensure clean, strong wells with good penetration. Place the truss back on the axle housing. Clamp the welder ground lead to an unpainted part of the axle housing. Do not clamp anywhere near the steering knuckle bearing locations. Once the truss is positioned, tack weld the truss in the three places shown. After the initial tack welding, tack weld the truss every two inches. The tip of the welder is about two inches long. Notice how the technician is using the tip to estimate two inch intervals. To reduce the risk of axle housing warpage, distribute the heat across as large an area as possible. 
The following guidelines have proven to be helpful. Never weld more than two inches in a single pass. Alternate sides of the axle after each pass. Weld as far away from the previous bead as possible and let the axle cool down for 15 to 20 minutes after every four or five passes. After tacking the truss every two inches, apply the first two inch bead as shown. Now apply the second two inch bead as far away from the first bead as possible. The third bead is applied between the first and second bead as shown. Continue this process until the truss is welded all the way around. Remember to let things cool down every four or five beads. It is important, however, to leave these two openings so that water has a way to escape. Now let's move on to welding the differential guard. The guidelines associated with welding the differential guard is similar to those of the truss. To reduce the risk of axle housing warpage, distribute the heat across as large an area as possible. The following guidelines have proven helpful. Avoid welding any more than two or three inches in a single pass if possible. Weld as far away from the previous weld as possible. Rotate the axle housing. Position the diff guard on the axle housing. Be sure it is centered on the differential housing. Also, the top of the differential guard should sit level when the axle housing is installed in the vehicle. And finally, be sure that the check and fill hole is centered on the check and fill plug. Using a white permanent marker, mark the position of the differential guard. Remove the differential guard. Using an angle grinder with a flap disc, clean away any paint in the areas to be welded. Place the differential guard back on the axle housing. Double check it for proper fit. Tack well the differential guard in several places. Once tacked, begin welding by applying the first two inch bead at the nine o'clock position. Apply the second bead opposite the first bead at about the three o'clock position. Apply the third bead at about the 6 o'clock position. Apply the fourth bead at about the 10 o'clock position. Apply bead number 5 at about the 2 o'clock position. Then bead number six. And bead number seven. Do not weld these two openings. They are designed to let water drain out. Clean all the wells with a wire brush. After all the welded surfaces have cooled, apply several coats of a good quality paint to all the exposed metal surfaces. This will improve appearance and reduce the risk of rust and corrosion. The next step is to weld on the leaf spring spacer. Position the leaf spring spacer. Ensure that the holes align properly and that the spacer is approximately the same size as the spring perch. Using an angle grinder and a flap disc, remove any paint from the area to be welded. Shh. 
place the leaf spring spacer back in position and tack weld it in two places. Once tack welded, weld the spacer all the way around. After the spacer has cooled, wire brush it and apply several coats of a good quality paint. We remind you that all the parts and supplies required to rebuild this axle can be purchased through our website at www.lowrangeoffroad.com or by calling 801-805-6644.